Welcome to the Football Show, sponsored by Indigo Communications. We're live here on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Tam Cowan's with me, and two guys who obviously believe that yellow is back in <laughs> as a colour. Um, we'll debate that a little later on, Tam, once we came, the two of them. But Ruffy and Ian Ferguson are here with us because we've got lots to talk about. Uh, some great football to discuss from yesterday in the Champions League. A few contentious issues along the way, um, Ruffy. And we'll look ahead to Hearts tonight. But uh, first and foremost, Ibrox, there was an incredible TIFO. They put a lot of work into it, Ruffy, uh, to commemorate the passing of the Queen. It got praise from a number of sources right across the UK. Some people not too enthralled by it, but it was impressive. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, if you were in the stadium last night, it would have been a, an impressive sight. It was fantastic. The place was jumping, as you would expect, in the Champions League night. And uh, unfortunately, the result never went their way. But uh, if you were there the night, I think the players would have enjoyed most part of it. Not, not the latter part of it, obviously. But uh, no, another Champions League night for me. Uh, and only in, uh, only in uh, Scotland, <coughs> uh, UEFA, contemplate fining Rangers for singing God Save the King and the Queen? Aye, well, well, well first up on that, no, I, I was perplexed about that. Should last night they have been singing God Save the Queen, uh, which has always been, and it was a tribute to the Queen, yes. or should they have immediately moved on last night to God <laughs> Save the Queen, uh, the King? Because I think there was a couple of them doing different things. Uh, certainly Alan McCoy was getting at Gusto, he was the main voice you could hear. Did you hear that? You could hear him over the mics. He right? was obviously getting at Lowndes, so yeah. maybe uh, with Ali uh, being seen as the good guy, the cheeky chappy, question a sport, a laugh, a joke and a giggle, maybe he's the guy that should front up UEFA and say, don't be so ridiculous. But look, look, at the, look at the effort the fans put into that. I mean, look at all the, the TIFO displays. I, I know that any that Celtic or Rangers do will always get uh, a kind of mixed reception, first and foremost for the opposite side and then maybe the rest of Scottish football, but that, that takes a bit of doing and it was very, very um, impressive and I say that, I'm neither, I'm, I, I, for the past couple of weeks, never MD asked my opinion on this, I'm neither pro-royalist or anti-monarchist, you know, yeah. uh, for me it was a wee 96 year old woman that had passed away last week who had, who had given a lot, you know what I mean, and that's why I say it first and foremost, if other folk can have compassion, that's up to them, but no, I thought that was great last night. Yeah, I mean, listen, we've all, we've already highlighted on this programme all week uh, about the democracy and people who have the right to object to uh, whatever, you know, um, as long as you do it in a decent way. Um, some people obviously want to show their respect, some people... Uh, I think are disrespectful and I agree with you I think it's, it's a woman who's passed away and a family that are sad at the loss of their mum um, nevertheless even in a football sense though Ian you know I wonder how they're going to actually turn around and, and, and offer they're, they're going to wait and see what the report comes from the UEFA delegate but you, you've had your you've had your minute's silence you can't then suddenly turn around and start firing out fines for what people sing in the stands well, you certainly think no. I was at the game last night. I was working there on behalf of the club, and again, the atmosphere before the game was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, everybody knew uh, they announced that they were going to have a minute silence, and then uh, played a national anthem. And again, I, I give you time. Some people were saying, "God bless you, King. God bless you, Queen." Yeah. But again, did they, they play they, the national anthem, or did people just start singing? Oh no, they started well, they playing it. Started, it playing, started it playing it. That big long that's drum back you get at the very the start. That's the minor technicality then. Eh? That's the minor technicality. Why? Well, because at the end of the day, I, I'm looking at I'm thinking to myself, if 50,000 fans start singing God Save the King or God Save the Queen, mm. you know, you, know, you stopped, can't... You can't right, you're saying you can't it wasn't as impromptu as it may have been. No, but uh, the minute they played in the backing track, boom. Rangers are... Uh, you forgot to say, no, 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 aye, no. We have the karaoke track. Yes, aye. you know, so... And I imagine having to worry about something like that. Yeah, you know, that's the nature of the me. country now. It's just nuts, you know, crazy. And I the Celtic fans, I saw the Celtic... But we're, we're having a go at the Crown Bar in <laughs> Belsal. <laughs> <It's>, you know... <laughs> Wait, what's the Crown Bar done the upset MD? John Beaton had one drink in it one night and then they've got a banner. I have to say, although I'm, I'm not laughing at you, we're going to get to that later um, because I think that might get um, them in trouble as well. If it doesn't get them in trouble, it's certainly uh, something distasteful from a group of supporters, you know, a small group of supporters who had a banner that I thought just again would have, some of the, the board would have been sh just shaking their head because it kind of tarnishes... Uh, the image, Ruffy. I, I, you know, I just, I, I might as well tell you. I looked at it and I thought, you know, right on the middle of the television as well. Yeah, we said that yesterday. You know, any anybody, any ground, you know, 
carries on like that is a waste of time. You know that, uh, there's, as Tam said, there's a time and a place for everything. You know that you have to show respect, uh, and it, it's just it just brings bad feeling on your club from yeah. outsiders looking in who were watching that game, whatever country they were watching or whatever, and they see that and they go, that's just, what kind of club is that? Yeah. And it's not the club, it's a small minority that's doing it to the club. Yeah. Look, look listen, uh, Ruffy, and just, to, just to, so we can nail this and then we'll move on to the football, because I really always try and, we always try and talk about the football, but at the end of the day, um, and I know some people like it, I've got no qualms with people who either, as Tam says, don't like the monarchy, um, uh, don't agree with it, whatever. That's fine, that's a democracy. You've got your right to not like the monarchy, not like, you know, some people don't like popes. Um, you name it, do what you like, but there's a, way to, there's a way to be respectful and you're using the platform of the clubs and I think it tarnished the image of it. Um, nevertheless, at the end of the day, they sang it, whether they get a fine or not is... Uh, is something we'll find out shortly. I know a lot of people are, are posting their own thoughts on it, but to the game itself, I didn't expect them to beat Napoli, Ian. Um, and in the end, against 10 men, they were always going to be up against it. But I thought Nap Napoli looked good, even with 11 men on the park. Yeah, I think Napoli obviously they, they had a fantastic result against Liverpool in the first game when they came here with a big reputation. They're top of the, the Italian league. Uh, I thought Rangers came out the traps very quickly last night. Alfredo Morelos back in the team led the line very well, and he had a, an opportunity in the first cross of the game, and it, it, it was wasn't too far away. Sort of set the scene for me for a wee bit of how Rangers played on the front foot last night, and I think they took the game to Napoli and gave it a good go. And I thought, we overall, surprised they started. Was a surprise Alfredo started? No, yeah, no. I think he's a talisman uh, for Rangers in Europe. He's obviously the top scorer in the European competitions. I think they've had that extra few days to work on his fitness, which he's been gradually, bear in mind the boy was out since March. Yeah. So he's coming back in possibly a wee bit early over the last two or three weeks, got himself sent off against Hibs. He's not looked at his sharpest, but I, I thought last night, for a good hour anyway, he did look up to speed and he fought his corner and he got Rangers up the park. Yeah. He got them fouls, free kicks, he got into the, the goal scoring opportunities and he caused them a wee bit of havoc. And I think that then leads to people like Ryan Kent and Scotty Arfield being able to get any spaces that he moves defenders about and creates those opportunities. And I thought, I thought certainly for the first, until the sending off, I thought Rangers were good value for money against a good Napoli team. Yeah, uh, I mean, they had chances, Ruffy. I mean, Arfield had a, a raker. He's mentioned there, Alfredo Morelos. They gave a good go of it, but I, I just thought after the, the real incredible atmosphere, the noise, the lifting of the team, there was a moment when I just thought they've started to get into their zone, Napoli, and they've, they, they, you know, they've come to terms, almost like Real Madrid did to Celtic last week. You, you'll take that full hour of yeah. uh, you know, pressure and then... Yeah, I think if you're handing out <coughs> prizes, it was a better performance for Rangers, but you have to remember the two previous games where they got thumped, they were away from home. This was Rangers at home, and Rangers should be on the front foot at home, you yeah. know, and they were for most of the game. But like you're saying there, they just had three or four really, really special players. I mean, really going to hurt you, you know, and uh, obviously when they I had, had one each, you know, I thought it not, nothing each, you know, it might, it might have that way if they'd sort of kept defending as well as what they were. But obviously the sending off was a turning point in the game. And after that, you know, I, I don't see when, see when managers come in, not jail, but see when managers come in after a game and they can't break it down 10 men and they say, look, it's really hard. You don't realise how hard it is to break down 10 men. It's not if you've got good players, because good players will rip you to shreds if yeah. you get down to 10 men. Yeah, can I just say something to you just before I get Tam's thoughts on this? I mean, McGregor comes back in. I mean, mm. he saves two penalties, Ruffy. Yeah. Uh, whether, whether one <coughs> of them was a poor penalty or not, he saves two penalties. I mean, he totally and utterly justified his inclusion, even before that. Yeah, and these penalty saves in any other given day, would have, the, your team went on and won. Because everybody would have been lifted. You could hear the roar. You could, you can anticipate what the, the, the players were feeling themselves, you know, and that would be the inspiration to go on and win that game. But unfortunately, the, the, the sending off just killed it. 
Yeah, um, the penalties, were they were they right, Tom? Did you? Ah, well, first up, you can almost just play in last week's show. Remember, we were talking about McGregor, you yeah. know, and we were quite baffled. Why did they give him another year, which wasn't just for coaching? Why give him another year if they're not then going to play him? And as I say, the only thing maybe Alan McGregor had going against him last year, a couple of well-documented errors, but other than that, the fact that Craig Gordon was playing absolutely out his skin and he was grabbing all the, the headlines, but didn't he suddenly make... Alan McGregor a, a, a poor goalie or anything like that so I think it showed exactly what he could do last night um, the the referee we have to say never put a foot wrong you could argue to the cows come home about the one with Sands and about the players getting a bit tangled not. bottom line is if it happened at the other end everybody inside Ibrooks is screaming for it there is no doubt about that yeah. the handball with Barisic fair enough and then even the one that he had given to Rangers and get quickly disallowed by VR when it hit the boy's stomach you know but everybody is still baffled and the guy he's a, he's a highly respected he's a top end referee yeah. he's one of the refs that when you saw him at the start spinning the coin you recognised him you know for World Cups and European finals and all the rest of it um, but he obviously played it by the book but what a silly book it would appear when you know the Napoli player encroached yeah. so you know but the he was given the advantage if you like and that his teammate was allowed to take the penalty again well see when that happened uh, Ian, I, I was waiting for him to go and then turn around and say indirect free, free kick, kick Rangers, Rangers. Um, I, I mean it's it's a rule that I think they'll, they'll need to address it's bonkers it was, it was mental wasn't it there are, there's that many new rulings but I, I, I do remember that ruling if somebody encroached they would have to take it again yeah. whether they scored or they missed I, I think that was always the way it was because I was sitting next to somebody and I said no they're going to retake it I said what I said well that's the the bonus is, as you like, was the guy put the rebound in, so you get another opportunity to try and save it, which again I managed to do. Aye, aye. But again, looking at it from the point of view, people were discussing it this morning. I was listening to that point of view. Well, if he encroached and the forward encroached, and he's the guy that's committed the offence, yeah. why should they? get another go exactly. it should be but again there's that many rulings Tam I, I just don't know if we want to but that was always a ruling and if somebody encroached whether it's defensive or attacking and it was an encroachment it was retaken whether and you were, scored or they missed you were there then you were there salt with your own eyes three penalties at Ibrox and Tavernier didn't yeah. take one of them I mean that's one for the grand mains isn't it you're dying out in that story you were there you saw that with your own eyes so I've seen the Hindenburg disaster or something it'll be one of your quiz questions I'll please yeah, well, yeah, absolutely yeah. but I mean with that in mind Ruffy God he nearly saved the third one as well yeah, he was inches away from it yeah he got a good hand to it as well and, but it was so well placed and so well hit you know they just squirmed under him you could see the disappointment in his face because I think he thought he had saved it no, let, let's ask this though. I mean, for the outset, they were saying last night, John McLaughlin's injured. Yes. <laughs> was he? <laughs> well, I mean, I <laughs> was at the game time. <laughs> right. Privy to the, the, the medical right. side yeah. of things. I, I would assume if. Well, said, I wish him a speedy said, recovery. If he said he was injured, then I'm quite sure well, he was. He yeah. it wasn't he on the bench for second no. off. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, let's let's cut to the chase though, Ruffy. I mean, I thought. Napoli would win 2 0. It ended up 3 0. And I thought, even thought that was harsh to, to, to Rangers. They're a top side, you know, they've got really good technical players and and Celtic and Rangers are finding out that if you don't score first in these yep. games at this level, you're getting picked off. Yeah, these teams, when 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 they get the chances, they score. Uh, when our teams get the chances, they don't score, generally, you know, and that's what wins games. And when you get the Champions League, big players win your games, cracking goals win your games, you know, even goals late on in the 90th minute. You know, that's what these teams do. They just grind you down and then someday we'll be a bit of special, does something special and then you're, you're out in your ear. But I thought in the last 10 minutes, I know Rangers were down to 10 men, but they looked really class yeah. and they're finishing and they're... Were, was absolutely but even, even when Rangers been doing it to 10 men you know I, I, I still expected Napoli to look a bit better but uh, I mean they weren't the Apache on Real Madrid no. um, against Celtic they were a class outfit in terms of how they kept the ball particularly laterally and what they were doing with it they were absolutely top drawer but I don't think Napoli were, were, were quite there you know no I thought I, I mean I, I look at the group and, I, and I'm, it's not a it's, it's just an observation of the, the way this group's going. I, I thought Rangers would be lucky. After Ajax and the way they played, Ian, I, th I looked and I thought, Rangers are going to be lucky to get a point here. I can see maybe a battling performance against Ajax, but Napoli home and away, 
Liverpool back to back, mm. home and away. You're looking and you're saying to yourself, where are the points coming from? And, and you see the group now and you're looking and you're saying, it, it is going to be tough for them to get something out of this group. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think we all knew that when they qualify for the, the group stages of the Champions League, you're going in against real good quality opposition. And you look at the group and you look who's there and you think, where are you going to pick up your points? Possibly before the group started, you think Napoli at home would be one that you would try and get a point or if you're lucky enough to get three. I mean, the way they played in the Europa League last year against some good top quality opposition, yeah. they took the game to them and home and away they managed to get results. So very, very difficult to live up to that again and another season and especially when you're going into now the Champions League group stages. There's no bad teams. No, and as no. Alan said, I mean, I think the first opportunity that boy, I think Stephen Davis had not given the ball away all night and then one bad pass, it goes straight past Colin Goals and the boys straight through. They're then chasing them down towards the goals. Yeah. That's top quality opposition where they sit back in Europe. Yeah. Any of the teams you played against in Europe, they would let you come at them, be on the front foot, but they always had a couple of flying machines up front or quality up front that yeah. if they get the opportunity, nine times out of ten they put it in the net. Is he under pressure? Because you know a lot of people are looking and thinking three games, eleven goals conceded, none scored. And now you're looking, you're saying to yourself, well, it's done to United at home, then it's Hearts and Liverpool away. Is the standards at Rangers such that some people, I, I, I mentioned uh, you know, the other day there, he's, he's about maybe 120 games, 120 days ago, they're in the Europa League final, two weeks ago they've, they've qualified for the group stages, and suddenly now there seems to be this groundswell of, wait a minute, this is not good enough, he could be under pressure. But I don't think he's under any... Immediate pressure. I think the fact that being a Rangers or a Celtic manager, you're always under pressure. Yeah. You're only two bad results away from people wanting you to get the sack. That's what happened last week when they get two really bad performances, not just results, but really two bad performances, one against Celtic, one against Ajax. And I think they needed to show something last night, and I think they did. I thought they, they showed that they had <coughs> the players had faith in the manager, they put on a performance where the work rate was better, they were on the front foot, right. they took the game to them, yeah. and the fans that, when I was about, were happy with that, because they're playing against quality opposition. Being under pressure as such, again, I, I was saying to people before the game, it's only like three weeks ago where he was a master tactician that went to PSV, uh, saw the game, played the, the players in the right position, we had Tillman making a goal for Cholak, two new players, and he'd unearthed this team. And then a week later, everybody wants to give him a sack. Yeah. So it shows you how quickly and easily football can, can it put also, you back It also there. depends how you dress up things, because as somebody pointed out to me today, Rangers haven't scored a goal uh, since the Elizabethan times. It's a great are, line. Are you just going to go through your whole royal gags in this one? That, I bet, uh, <laughs> But it's only three games, of course. But uh, but yeah, but I'll tell you one thing, just going back to the referee for a minute. You're saying, of course, Napoli were able to play because we're up against 10 men. Again, uh, maybe the only mistake the referee did make was in no sending off Alfredo Morelos, which should have been about a clear, a clear tug of the jersey yes. once the players buy you. That's about in any day of the week. Listen, and that would have resulted in a red, you know. The, so The mere fact that Rangers were denied a penalty with VAR in the last minute, I think there must have been some Rangers fans just thinking, well, that's just put the tin uh, lid in this whole uh, thing, you know. But you uh, know what, uh, I think to go back to the point Ian's made know about uh, Van Bronckhorst. I, I think, if anything, uh, it was night and day compared to the, the Ajax performance and result. I think Rangers actually did come out with a bit of, a bit of credit. I yeah. mean, it was night and day compared to that game the previous week. If you're going to go down, as long as fans see you're fighting and you're battling away, yeah. that's what they want. And as I would say, it's a home game. Yeah, I mean, it was a home it. game. Those two games that they get beat were away from home, so they had to. A slight, a slight observa observation that, I was, that was different. At the Celtic game, when they get hammered with Real Madrid, the Celtic fans were all still there at the end. They were all singing, they were all clapping. Yeah. I don't, Ian was there last night, I'm only going with what I saw on the telly. When it was 2 nothing, that stadium was half empty. They'd left. Ah, but there was a wee posse, there was a wee posse waiting no, for the Napoli players. So I think the fans, I think the fans... <laughs> trying to get autographs during the warm-up, I believe. <laughs> You, you, oh. By the way, there's, there's, there's four more grenades down there, could you throw them? <laughs> right. um, listen, the other thing I was going to say to you though, Ruffy, yeah. I, I know you're talking about, you know, if, if fans are scunnered, you can understand why. 
you know, overall it's 3 nothing. They've lost the game. The one thing I was going to get your thoughts on, though, is he's, he's come in for a bit of criticism because whoever Ross Wilson, we talked about it the other week there on the show about signings, you yeah, know, no, even no, we've no, got no, people no, on the feet here, Gallant, no, no, saying the no, poor no, recruitment no. is coming back to bite us now, Peter. Yeah. And, and, I, and I wonder if Rangers fans are starting to say, well, you know, it's a squad game now. You've got to come on. You've got to get a sub that's going to make a telling influence in the no, match, Robbie. I, and it's I, not there. I, I, I think the recruitment was just for, for club level. I don't think yeah. the Look recruitment... Look at the stats. I know, I know there was none of them playing last night, but I don't think the recruitment and the, the object was to get into the Champions League and, and enjoy every minute of it. It's a building job, you know, and I think next year you'll see better players coming in. But this year, I think he was just trying to fill the... Full places here and there, and it's a lot of injuries as well. But yeah, but Ruffy, you've got Yilmaz, 3.4 million, Davis, 4 million, Matondo, 2 million, uh, Cholak, 1.8 million, who I think has been, a, has been a success. I also think Lawrence has been a success. I think John Souter's predicament is slightly different um, because of his family bereavement. And Tillman, a couple of weeks ago, Tam, they were talking about Tillman and thinking, well, that's a good signing, you know, but some of the players that should be actually pushing for a place yeah, are not so contributing. I, I can't agree with Ruffy there about if it's a, a, a building job. I mean, we're only into September, for goodness sake. Yeah. Any any Rangers fans that think this is a building job, they will be apoplectic, you know. it's um, well, you, know, you don't need Tam, a building but, job with a team that's Tam, just what? lost two players huh? and been in the Europa ah, League no, final. No, you've what, you've what, lost two players, Tam, Fergie. Peter, what I'm saying is these players aren't going to take you to first and second in the Champions League. Group, no, but the no, but the fact so that's that, what I'm saying. No, He's no, no bought players to do, to get them into the next last sixteen of the Champions League. No, but with all due respect, the fans are looking and saying to themselves, "Well, if there is money spent, and I think a lot of the fans, and and especially when you look at Dave King's comments over the last week, a lot of the fans are expecting." more money to be spent because they were getting into the Champions League with that guaranteed amount of money. So there's no transparency in what happened there. But if you're going to spend money, Ian, you've got to look and say to yourself, spend it with players that you think are going to make a contribution. Celtic's strike rate and players that are making a contribution is far greater than what Rangers are having at the moment. Well, I think it is just now. Again, I agree with what Alan said. I think they, they replaced Calvin Bassey and Joe Aribo obviously left for big money and yeah. they, for whatever reason. Uh, again, bringing the players in, I think there's been injuries. The three cent and a half for me, they let Balligan go, which I think they probably let Balligan go because John Souter's coming in, so is Ben Davis. Uh, you've got Leon King, who's trying to force his way into the team, a young boy who's doing really well. Uh, and again, Halander's been out injured for a, a number of months. If you could, uh, uh, this period where they were struggling at set pieces and they were losing height advantage at a lot of set pieces, where uh, the boy Sands has come in for a wee bit of criticism, but he's a midfield player who's pushed back into play centre half yeah. because you have three centre halves, two who have came in, John Souter and Ben Davis, who for whatever reason they've not been fit enough to play in the games. The young boy Yilm has come up, uh, played against Queen of the South last week, looked bright, looked very quick and, and certainly going forward in an attacking sense, I think he'll be a good asset. Yeah. It's just finding a place for him in the team because Borna Barisic has been put under pressure by a left back coming in. He's up to his game. He just certainly looks a much better player from the start of the season yeah. and even the tail end of last season. But it's finding a place for that that boy. But if you're a manager, mm -hmm. and here, here's I the... Film, no. <laughs> well, exactly. Well, the thing, well, I always try and look and... and here's Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, first of all, saying, I'm not just going to play a player because he's a new signing. Well, I always pick the team who I think will, will win the game. I'm not going to pick 11 players and say, OK, I put three new signings in and four players who already been here for 10 years. It doesn't work like that. You know, I have, I, have, I have two eyes, you know, I can see how the performances are, I can see uh, how they train, and eventually I don't look at new signings or players who are already here for longer years. I just pick the, the, you know, the, the best 11 for the game today, and I think, you know, the, the starting 11 played really well. Tam, uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is basically saying, I've watched him in training, I can see these players, mm -hmm. I know the quality of the opposition I'm playing, so they're not good enough to get in at the moment. Aye, aye, exactly. And, you know, with the best small in the world, as much as Ruffy's saying they don't have the players in there, 
uh, to think about last 16 of the Champions League, they won't be able to get their players. That's like me saying, we need to bring in players at Murnau so that we're first or second in the Scottish Premiership. That's not going to happen. The game has moved on so much, you know. Yeah. Back in the day, how many times did <laughs> Celtic get through to the latter stages under first track and then uh, Neil Lennon was at last last 16, yeah? Yeah. It, uh, you know, even then, these other clubs, weren't they, weren't they so far ahead? That The absolute multi-multi-millions when you go back maybe even 20 years. It, it, it was a different game even in that relatively short period of time. So, you know, uh, Giovanni Van Brockhurst has said uh, last week, and lo and behold, did you expect it to happen? Uh, Stephen Robinson, the St Mirren manager, came out. Fans of all other clubs, like Motherwell supporters, etc., all came out and said, oh, you seem to realise there's a financial gap when you get into Europe, you know. You know, join the club. Yeah. We, we, we see it week in, week out, but we've just got to get on with it. And that's why I think Celtic and Rangers, they've got to look at the Europa League and even the Europa Conference League and think, you know what, that's got to be our level for the foreseeable if we want to particularly play European football after Christmas. Just one little caveat to that, and I think it goes back to what you were talking about, Ruffy. I don't think anybody expects Rangers or Celtic to shell out 10, 20 million oh. for a player that gets them in because both clubs have to punch above their weight. <clears throat> They've got to. They've got to produce results which nobody expects and surprise people. I think what the Rangers fans are looking at is saying if you're going to spend two, three million pounds, four million pounds, you're always going to be judged on what's happening across the city. So try and try and get players that are going to make a contribution who are starting players. And I think that's what the criticism has been. Some of these signings are nowhere near the first team. No, but he's explained. Uh, they're, they're the now, you know, the, the, the ones they've signed are up to scratch. And it's not the first time that a, a player's came to a club and they've said, oh, he's about four weeks away from the, the level of everybody else, you know. But he will be judged. You know, I, I think in our league more than that one, I think it is disappointing. I've said all along, I think Rangers were in the harder of the two groups. You know, now you see the quality of uh, the Italian team top of the Italian league and, and the way the games that are coming up, fast and furious. So if Rangers were to get into the Europa again, it would be an absolute bonus, but they need to start winning home games. Yeah, um, OK, um, that's Rangers. You can give us your point of view, We're reading out as many as we possibly can over the course of the programme, but a lot of Rangers fans also looking at the signings and uh, over and above that talking about uh, the results, the goals conceded, and you can give us your thoughts on Giovanni Van Bronckhurst as well. Uh, and we'll try and read out some of your messages. Um, incidentally, we usually fire in the quiz question. I thought I'd fire it in now because um, I don't think we'll get it in later because we're just about to talk about Celtic's performance and then we'll look towards Hearts and the weekend's football, which Tam obviously will talk about um, Motherwell too. Um, but the quiz question, uh, which team won the UEFA Europa Conference League last year? Uh, we'll give you the answer at the end of the programme. Uh, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> okay. that, that's only a tournament when there's Scottish clubs in it. Once they're out of it, and it's the it's a Vauxhall Paint or Trophy or whatever you call it. Texaco Cup, uh, isn't it? Anyway, oh, bring that back. Yeah, no, I was just about to say it, to you. It? Yeah, yeah Texaco Cup. Uh, okay, here's a. Ruffin, know the answer? You no, I'm just he knows saying, the answer. He was asking me, did I know the answer? And for once, I think I might. Well, of course, it. listen, if you two can't get that, yeah. you need to have a long hard yeah. look at yourself or change the yellow gear you're wearing. Listen, <laughs> what about the. Uh, what about. I don't know about you, Ruffin, but well. I sat down and I thought, right, great, I've got two games coming up tonight. Uh, I'm going to be able to watch them in the living room. Um, we drink at the left hand side, and boy, in Warsaw, Celtic should have won that game by yeah. about four or five goals. They were impressive. Yeah, a quick summary of the game. Uh, Celtic came out of the traps as they always come out of the traps, you know, and I don't think they could handle them for the first 15 minutes. They got the goal, they were up for it, they were really controlling the game. And then 20, 25 minutes, I sat here yesterday and said, yeah. I need to see this team defending. I need to see them when they're under pressure. I need to know if they can handle it. I thought for the last 20 minutes of the first half they did, they showed me. I thought it was a poor goal they lost, but obviously a bit of quality in the end. But for that 20, 25 minutes, they can defend away from home, which was good. The second half was just total dominance. And I don't know how Maida missed that one and the big Greek boy, how he put it over the bar. He had so much time. Yep. They just totally dominated the game. That Shakhtar had 
didn't have an answer for the 45 minutes, and that's what we want to see. Yeah. You know, and I know we get carried away, but with that performance, I'm now looking at Celtic. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm now looking. <laughs> I, had, I, had Celtic, I had Celtic just go for the Europa. Yeah. Now, if Shakhtar is the, the, the bearer to be second, yeah. I think Celtic have got a chance. If they get their act together and they start scoring goals, well, here's I the, think they could maybe get second. Here's the point. I'm going to speak to a striker who scored in the new camp <laughs> when all the odds were against him for Dundee United. Um, if you want to talk about levels, Ian, uh, when you look at Rangers' performances in the Champions League, you look at Celtic's performances, you know, when the ball drops to you in that box... Celtic have got to score. Maeda, Giacomakis, Jota has a chance where he's literally beaten two or three men and you think there is a moment when you've got to hit that ball and take your chances and, and when they were missing them, slowly but surely you start to think, maybe one of these nights again. I saw the game briefly, obviously I was working last night and I saw fleeting uh, glimpses of it and I knew they had a few chances and I saw some of the highlights of it. So again, it's that wee bit of composure when you get into those positions when you're in a cup final or a European match and you know you might only be getting one of these tonight. So when you get it, you have to slow yourself down and have that composure to just do it as if you're doing it at training. You're doing it as if you're doing it on a day-to-day -day basis. Is that the and way you used to have your sure, mindset? Well, make sure... Well, I used to uh, uh, make sure I had to target a Jim McLean and go mental, know what I mean? <laughs> but at uh, the end of the day, in, in the context of being able to do that, you have to have that composure. You have to have that belief in yourself that you have... If you don't hit the target, you ain't scoring. It's an old one. Yep. And I think when I was watching the, the chances that Celtic did get, they didn't hit the target. They blasted it wide, or even if it went a wee bit wide, he's well going 10 yards wide. You have to make sure you hit the target and make the goalkeeper. If you want to save it, then you've done your job. So, again, a wee bit of composure, a wee bit of luck at times when yeah. you're in that situation as well, if the ball goes either side. But uh, again, you tend to find when boys are on form, which the Celtic boys are, they've got that slow composure strike. Normally, we see strikers who go off the boil it's because they go quickly or yeah. they take an extra touch. But one of the two, they either snap at a chance and they just screw it past the post and they don't do what they normally do uh, or they, they get that scared way where they go, oh, I better take another touch and then they get shut down. Yeah. So again, I know they had a lot of that. I, I've led to believe they played very, very well and dominated the second half and I saw a, a couple of the chances that they had. So very unfortunate not to come away with three points. Yeah, but let me ask you and just come back to Celtic in a minute, right? Because yeah. he, he obviously played under the two of them. When they were both at their peak of their powers, Tommy McLean in 1991, Jim McLean, 83, 84, 85, you look to two of them in the room and let them have a ding dong at each other. Who wins? Oh, easy. I'd be Jim once. Would I? Aye. I'd be Tommy. Tommy would have been sh shouting ball, but he had big time for Scythe. He's back. <laughs> 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 right. Big time, but I love to death. I miss him dearly. But uh, we, Tam would give him a bit of backup. Aye. I remember he chased Colin. Colin and Neil and him were chasing each other around the treatment table in the middle of the dressing room one day, <laughs> and Tam had to step in as the uh, stop, sit down, son. You know what I mean? Uh, but we, Jim, when Jim went, to town, everybody just all right. Die. Okay, but okay. Yeah. Right. Um, sorry, my thought in the game was, you know, I'm, I'm saying we could just have repeated what we said about Alan McGregor last week. It was literally Alan McGregor again, where you were sitting here after the same. Celtic had to take their chances, yeah. and there's no question. I think that was two points dropped last night because you've got to remember too that it was it was a neutral venue. Um, you know, uh, Celtic had plenty of their supporters there. They really made themselves heard. And for the passages they play that they had, the chances that they created, one each is a sore one, you know. They should have had the three points, no doubt. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, he surprised a few people with the team selection, Rafi Aksanovic, uh, sorry, and Kyogo starting. But I just thought that the, the manner of the way they went about it, again, they came out of the traps flying. You're right, they had that 15, 20 minute spell where I thought, you know, Shakhtar really come into their own. But as I as I view this whole thing and the way they're playing, you know, Celtic fans are looking at it and thinking, this is the way they want to see their team play and he's sticking to his guns. I mean, right after the game, he was adamant, um, Ange Postacoglu saying, you know, the results will come if you just stick to the game plan. Um, the performance was excellent. Um, obviously, the result is not reflective of that. But you know, second half, like I said, I mean, the whole game, I thought we 
players gave everything and that's all I can ask for. Um, obviously we needed that second goal and we had good chances to get it but um, you know, from my perspective I can't ask any more of them and um, you know, we'll get our rewards if we keep playing that kind of football and showing that sort of commitment. Yeah, um, they'll get the rewards, Ruffy. The way I'm looking at that group, if you have a look at the table right now, I can see six points where I think it's realistic to say Celtic could. The home games against Shakhtar and Leipzig will be huge. I, I, I look at the, the Bernabeu and I think no chance. And I'm looking at the other one uh, and I'm thinking away from home against Leipzig who were totally and utterly um, gifting goals to um, Shakhtar last week. I think there's a, a real chance of seven points, which could be enough for the Europa League. Yeah, I, I think I think seven points. If Real Madrid go on an all-conquer and beating everybody, seven co seven points might be all right. For second. second. Yeah, might, yeah. If, if Real Madrid beat everybody home and away, yeah. you know, I mean, obviously that means the other teams aren't getting that many points. So you, you've got to win your home games. Yeah. Are you going seven or are you thinking more? No, I just, want, I'm to, only, I'm just want to pin you down for later shows. Ones. You can see where I'm going, setting no, the well, trap I, for you. I think, I think we, if we can get a chance to see, is the, is the Leipzig game at home for Celtic before the second one? The next one is away. Well, Three we'll get, weeks yeah, from Yeah, but that, that'll be another toughie, you yeah. know, because obviously you're banking in your two home ones. I, I think a draw in Leipzig would be enough. Yeah? Yep, to get signed. Yep. Tom? Uh, I, I, when you look at the group, I need to see what Leipzig are like in the, in the flesh. No, I've not watched them yet, but I think Celtic have got every chance of being second in that group. Um, only, I'm just basing that on what I watched last night, and that's why, again, they'll be cursing themselves for the missed chances, the fact that Celtic could have been sat in second in that group and the, yeah. the Shakhtar below them, but there you go. Yeah, um, it's St Mirren on Sunday, Motherwell then Leipzig away, and then Leipzig um, at home uh, and that is in, uh, the, on the 11th of October but the first one is uh, the 5th of October Leipzig away now um, with that in mind um, Ruffy just one little footnote I have mentioned it I don't think it was a good thing to hold up that banner um, in, uh, just in front of the Green Brigade I thought it was you know p in poor taste and secondary to that just at the weekend alone I think you know we live in a culture now where people are First of all, there's a lot of people who want to be professionally offended. Secondly, I think when people legitimately do something that tarnishes the name of the club, then they're open to criticism. And I think people are waiting for St Mirren against Celtic mm -hmm. to wonder what is going to happen, whether it's applause, silence or whatever. They're going, to, they're going to have a pot shot at them. And I wonder what the conduct of the Celtic away support is going to be. Yeah, well, I've, I've already said my case. You know, for me, it's uh, if you think that there is going to be some kind of disruption, it's, it's, a, it's a minute's applause. Uh, because you would like to think it's a, it's a minimum people who are going to cause, you know, the upset. You would think the applause would drown most of that out, you know, and then we saw one referee doing it. If he thinks it's there, just cut it short. Yeah, well, the Liverpool just game. The Liverpool game. I agree with Ruffy because, you know what, see when you do with the silence thing, then you get pockets of fans and start two. then guys just feel obliged to shout back at them and it all gets dead, dead yeah. grubby. But the Liverpool you know? game, the referee, it was 20 seconds and he blew the whistle. Well, if that, good on the ref then. Yeah. Good on the ref. You know, they got absolutely hammered, but they're sensible guys and he clearly thought, right, that's it. Come on, nip us in the bud. But, um, you know, you just wish folk could go on with it and, and all the rest of it. But we, we've, we've seen it, you know, there have been clips circulating, uh, Peter, this week, um, historical clips for 20 years ago when other uh, silences, minute silence, uh, had not been fully recognised. There was one away back, I remember I was in Gran Canaria at the time, you remember that, when there was a Pope that died and it happened here as well. Yeah. And, you know, but um, it's, it's bad that you've got to go down the road to make that applause yeah. so that you hope it drowns out um, any folk who don't want to pay their respects. But, you know, so be it. Just, yeah. just got on with it. Thank goodness it's only a minute, tops. Yeah, absolutely. Did you go on holiday when the Pope died? I was out there, it was just one of the things that I can always remember. I'd never been to, no, I'd never been to Gran, I'd never been to Gran Canaria before yeah. and it was just in the hotel, uh, we were getting out to get rid of it and every news channel was all pointing the cameras at the Vatican yeah. and uh, that was it. Just showing off going on holiday <laughs> while me and Fergie were here in the village struggling. <laughs> 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 Brilliant, Tom. Oh, you've got a night out soon, though. Oh, I, br have I broke my diary. Well, can I just say something uh, to you before you start, you know, uh, fawning over it? No, because, oh, because no, wait a minute. Ruffy, the other day there, turns round and gives it 
oh, you know, I, I played in a game Glasgow Select against England and, and my top, I gave it to some little unfortunate boy at the side of the, 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 the track at Hamden and, and the whole place, everybody's going, oh, everybody's going, oh, Ruffy, we'll love him, he's just housewife's favourite, right? And then a boy, <laughs> a boy sent me a text and says, I bought that top and, I, and I bought that top at Sotheby's when he sold it, right? So I'm thinking, he's or doing true. his own PR and you, of all people, the whole staff are off on the Monday. Mm -hmm. You lost last year's predictor, so you're taking, oh, you were taking the pundits mm -hmm. out. But then you said, "I'm going to take all the staff out as well." So yeah, everybody uh -huh. was on there going, uh -huh. "Oh, Tam Cowan at the BBC and now at PLZ, he's such a lovely guy." And then the text comes in, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. What yeah, was it like? The, the staff and everybody are off on the Monday, so everybody's thinking to themselves, "We are going to get absolutely." <laughs> Laddered, right? So the next thing is, the text comes through from you. I'm not, I, I'm not making a pool now. It's not good enough, and they're all going. Does a text lot. <laughs> so the next thing is, <laughs> the next thing is, they got all the staff and Ruffy and all the boys and everybody's going. Well, something must have come up, and I says, I'll tell you what come up, the Winnebago. You're away again, <laughs> aren't you? Oh, <laughs> You're wasting this yeah. moment, because this see, is me. See before you open that up. This isn't even my diary. Because <laughs> Alan Ruff. Yeah, <laughs> Party <laughs> Thistle, Scotland legend, yeah, MB. This is your life. Start the music. Yeah. No, see I'm, before I'm, you open that up, it yes. better not be next Monday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to look right, so I, I, I know I, I feel bad about that. <laughs> So that Sunday, the, the Sunday that I was, you know, thinking yeah. about would have been Sunday the 18th, right? Yes. So I'm sorry. So I'm looking right. at the next one that would be, who, who's Kelly Brook? <laughs> but the... <laughs> don't the pictures for ages. <laughs> but the, uh, I'm looking now at, and I'll yeah. say it loud and clear, and for the benefit of uh, the viewers, yeah. that's when I broke this, right. right? So they can back me in court so, if it comes to that. Right. Oh, Sunday, oh. October the second. No. Well, oh, no here. Well, how are you know here? I'm away. Away where? I've got a wedding in Tuscany. And I've got, oh. and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm in Lone Head. So, <laughs> in Lone Head, so. During the day? Yeah. Ah, we can be back at night. Right, okay, right, so the right. second. If it's not then, it will be, oh, at, uh, how about October? <laughs> Sunday the 9th. <laughs> Sunday the 9th. The 9th it's of October. Week. You're not away at a wedding right. for a week. Right. I'm away. Back. You're back. You're back. I'm back. You're back. You're back. The 9th. The 9th. The 9th. The 9th. Right, okay, so the staff are all going the 9th. Can I just say something to you? You played for Hearts. Do you have any thoughts that they can they can get a wee result tonight? Because Riga had a good result against Fiorentina, albeit again needed that wee bit of luck. I think it's like everything. You go into these games where I don't mind, and some of the teams in Europe. Sorry, you just carry on. I'm getting that spit <laughs> now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what rest you got? Uh, I think you go in with an open mind, and you never know how you're going to cope in Europe. Hi, is that until KFC? The, until the game <laughs> Die. Die. Yeah. <laughs> this is why it cost me a fortune. I absolutely. Uh, no, I'm hopeful. I mean, I'm certainly yeah. hopeful. I mean, I think Robbie Nielsen's done a fantastic job at Hearts. I mean, disappointing result the first last week, 4-0. Uh, but again, I give them every opportunity. If they if they, they have the right attitude and go as if no one's probably expecting them to get yeah. a result. But what so about the, the best way to do. Did you watch did you watch the game? I mean, uh, they just looked they just looked far better than Hearts yeah. at home in their own backyard. I just thought they looked, you know, a level below, uh, you know, the way they played against them. I've always said as well, Peter Ruffy might, might agree with this. A lot, it's, a lot of European teams play better away from home. I thought PSV when they came to Rangers played much better away from home than they did at home. When they have to, they sit back and take a bit of pressure, and they have these flying machines up front, and they have a certain way of playing that they yeah. pick you off, and before you know it, you're a couple of goals down. Uh, home advantage, obviously, with Rangers and Celtic, the crowd, and if you've got a team like that, then I get that. But uh, I don't know. I mean, Hearts disappointed, obviously, with the, the home result. Getting beat 4 nothing at yeah. home is not a great result. But again, is Europe a bonus to them just now? They're, they've consolidated last year in third place. They've started the season reasonably well. <coughs> and I think the European nights at Tynecastle were always great. Mm. But even on their travels, if you're not expected to win, it's maybe the best time. Yeah, well, um, Robbie Nielsen, uh, this is what he had to say ahead of this one. I've got real fears about Hearts for this one as well. It's an important game for us. As they all are, this will be difficult. Riga are very experienced. Since we were last in Europe, they've played 15 European games. 
we have to make sure we implement our game plan and hopefully that's enough to win the game. But I wouldn't say it's make or break. If we win, great. If we don't, then we move on to the next one. We're still very early in the group stage. Yes, we were beaten last week and we were very disappointed with the result. But we are only one game into a six game group section. OK, he's given us the uh, uh, the get out on this. It's not over until you hit, you hit the six games, Ruffy. But uh, this team... This team have got a few tall guys in it. Mm -hmm. You know, their average height and some well, of the players in the back line is six foot two upwards. Yeah. Well, so there's going to be a bombardment coming. Yeah, but I, th I think if you, if you know that what's coming, then you you work towards it. You know, you obviously th hope that he's done his homework. But uh, th this is the game. If they're going to take points, it's going to be against this team. I, I doubt they would be struggling a wee bit. After Tam McManus was telling me that they struggled to beat Linfield. You know, and Linfield, yeah. Linfield with a better side, so they can't be that good. But they're at home, so I, I think it's up to Hearts to put in a better performance than what they did at Tynecastle because they were all over the place there. Yeah. So I, 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 I've got a feeling they might get something, not a win, but a, a draw at least. Okay. Um, big apology to all the uh, Linfield fans who watch the program because that's basically, <laughs> it's basically Ruffy saying you're right, Rotten. Thanks for that, Ruffy. Um, well, I would wish a jambo as well and all, but I, I want it to be a really, really tough tie. I want it to be a really <laughs> arduous journey yes. uh, because we, of course, play them on Sunday. And actually, yeah. Sunday, I'm taking my wee girl to our very, very first Mother will oh, game. Wow. So in order to catch them for the rest of their lives, we need a win. No point taking them to Far Park and we get rumped 4-0. Yeah. So, but we do have King Louie back. Mm -hmm. Yes. Of course, yes. yes. I was actually just going to... There's a couple of things I want to mention to you about it all. Um, but on that basis, do you think you're going to get the... Sometimes people say you should never go back. No. Well, I told you, that's... Uh, John Sutton proved that as a nonsense when he came back and he scored more goals in a season than he'd ever done the first time in it, Mother, when he was revealed. So I think Louis Moult coming back, first and foremost, He's got a point to prove because it didn't to Preston, didn't it happen? Went on loan to Burton, Albion, you know, and you think, come on, you know. So he's coming up here saying, I'll show them that I can still do it. I'm really, really excited at the prospect, and I really hope, I think Stevie Hamill will, he's sticking him and Van Veen together up front, you know, particularly, now, front? We're, part, aye, particularly now we're playing Mare out in the wings and stuff, you know. I'm really excited at the prospect of that. Um, and he'll clearly be, you're talking about, you know, how. Uh, Celtic always come out the traps. I, I get the feeling he will. There is no doubt in my mind when he did the play last week, Muddle were very cute. Muddle didn't crack a light about whether he was going to play or not. And lo and behold, I reckon there was at least six on her own the gate, Ian. Mm. Uh, maybe expecting Lowe to make his uh, second debut for Muddle, but he didn't play. He'd only arrived up on the Friday and he wasn't, he wasn't fit and all the rest of it. But, um, you know, there's always this, the cynics, the sceptics. As I say, somebody texted me and we did sign him. Uh, and needless to say, it was one of my pals who supports Rangers and he maybe remembers the damage that Louis Moult did against Rangers at, in the semi-final uh, that particular day when Pedro Cachinha was the, the boss. But he texts me saying, who's this guy with the dodgy knees you've signed for Burton Albion? <laughs> <laughs> you read it like that, it maybe doesn't sound great, but yeah. no. I, I, I think we've won a watch. And can I just ask you this? Yep. Two quick points, then I'm going to get the guy's okay. thoughts on it. How receptive is Sophie to going to her first mother game? Well, she's right up for it. Yeah. She's right up for Has it. Has she, she got a strip? She, no, she's got a, she's very much a girly girl. So when I bought our, our wee cousin, uh, my wee niece, uh, Mia, for her birthday a few weeks ago, asked for a mother will strip. I mean the strip, right? Yeah. We got that for her birthday. When I took Sophie into the club shop at the same time, she saw the wee Claret and Ambery tops more that were quite nice, but a wee bit more girly, shall right. we say. Okay. You know, so she went for one of them. So she'll look resplendent. She likes a hot dog. Uh -huh. They're pretty good at Far Park. Yeah. She'll sit there. She may learn some new words, yeah. as all kids do <laughs> when they go to the game for the <laughs> first time. Ball certainty. <laughs> can you do me a big favour, Paul? If you can, and Ruffy and I, just, just for the benefit of everybody, could you take a photograph of Sophie on her own without the hot dog? Because you know what you like on that Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I know what Liz and Sophie eat every day. <laughs> right, OK. So, photograph of her, and hopefully... I mean, no disrespect to Hearts fans, but if she gets a win, it's always good, yeah. Ruffy. If you That's get a brilliant. win, then you're going to a game. Right. First one if ever. they just get the bug, 
it'd be great. It's a wee bit like they always say, the worst thing you can do if you put money in a puggy yeah. fruit machine, slot machine, is win right away. Because yeah. then you think you're always going to win. And, and that's your hook. Sophie gets a chance to jump up and down and, and, and cheer and cuddle everybody, you know, because it's great. That's the good well, thing about great. it. Aye, the you excitement. Know. And she'll oh. think that you go to games and don't drink before it and don't drink after it. <laughs> 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 oh, so, oh, that's a point of Sunday. I've not got the radio on Sunday. Absolutely. See, yeah. you think as well. That's another wee. It's a wee interesting thing. Oh, that's protocol. I know you're saying that you're. So you're basically there's no show on Monday. You're giving everybody a day off. Is that oh, what you're saying? It's a bank holiday for obviously. It's right. Okay. Zero. And then obviously there's the the funeral. But the amazing. I could sit and talk about it for for ages and ages. There's so much. The BBC. Is, is wrapped up in so much uh, protocol now. You know, there's wee interesting things that I think, you know, fans of football, listeners to the BBC would find fascinating that, you know, you can't even put up uh, tweets just now. We can't promote our shows for starting back at the weekend uh, because the, that's just a gen. That's a, a BBC. What, off the ball? That's a global thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, just tell Tam you've been doing it for the last three years <laughs> on this programme. You'll be fine. But, you know, <laughs> but you can't do that. And yeah. then even though we are back on here on the Saturday, uh-huh. And we can all intents and purposes do a, a normal show. We're not on uh, for our Sunday show yeah. because, again, in terms of decorum and all the rest, and how the BBC and the upper echelons do not London yeah. uh, see things, then no, we can't have you on pre funeral. And is that affecting uh, your dosh that's going into the bank, the Sunday one being off? Is no. that, well, no, no, just a, the last thing I want is you to lose five grand, um, which is. Which is <laughs> <laughs> He's not worse than losing money. You miss a week here and then I can't go for that shave that I enjoy after the show. <laughs> Ruffy, um, the weekend's fixtures, I mean, we're going to thankfully be looking forward to uh, some football as well because Rangers have got Dundee United, Hibs have got Aberdeen, Livingston, Kilmarnock, St Johnston, Ross County, and then of course St Mirren, Celtic, Motherwell Hearts. Um, I'm going to be in down to Fir Park for Motherwell Hearts. I think it's going to be a cracker. Yeah, I think it will be. I think we're all waiting to see what. Hearts come back with. You would think if they come back with something positive, they'll go into the game positive. You know, if they get uh, a defeat, you know, that puts an added pressure on the, the players and the manager. So let's hope they get something. But it'll be a good game. Yeah. Motherwell are threatening to be in that top six again. And just out of curiosity, are you in the Motherwell Hall of Fame yet? No, I think it's a collective unit with the 91 squad they're getting, but I never stayed there anywhere long enough to he, get in the Hall of Fame. He played a very vital part last year. <laughs> Hold on, I was doing his line there. Yes. I never stayed long enough. He's great because he's not in the Celtic Hall of Fame in six games. Yes, yeah. I'm afraid I'll say two things. First, to repeat myself, Ian had a pivotal part. That was just last year, wasn't it? it when was, David Cooper uh, got inducted. Yeah. So we got Ian up uh, as a former uh, teammate and uh, friend. So he played his part that night, spoke very well, of course, about David Cooper. But all I'll say Ian is, you know, we're only at the, the this will be the, what, the third, the fourth, uh, the third uh, Hall of Fame this November coming up. And the names are starting dribbling out. They, they feed them out one at a time when there's five inductees. So the first one that was mentioned last week, you probably saw it on social media. Brilliant. Keith Lasley, right? He, he, he was a shoe in, right? But I call it my vote when, you know, our, our, our trophy cabinet isn't exactly bursting at the seams. I would imagine that a gentleman who scored your opening goal in arguably the greatest cup final of all time, I think somebody like that would maybe sneak in. Well. It might be two years down the line. Well, to, don't, hey, let's not build up his hopes because well, for is. 10 years on the panel <laughs> of the Scottish <laughs> Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he I found that out. Yeah, I waited 10 years and I found out he was the chairman. <laughs> <laughs> but see, I think it would go in our favour with Ian, but this is where it plays against him. Yeah. Because he's still cutting about looking like Harry Styles, <laughs> right? If I suddenly heard him with a hard bronchial cough, I would say to the organisers, <laughs> get him in next year, you know, but, so we can take our time with him. Yeah, absolutely. Calm your jets. Yeah. Ian, you've still got a bit of time. It's to a wait. great thing, isn't it? These, I mean, you know what? I've never really? seen. Um, I think they're great events. He's better than any 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 stuff at the clubs. And I would urge every club to do. I mean, some of them do. We were up was at the Montrose one. Uh, we were both up at the that big golf hotel uh, just pre COVID. It was either Montrose or our bro. I think it was Montrose. Yeah, we, that's we were, right. Yeah. We were both booked to that. And you see the joy it brings to these guys, you know. And I never thought that I would see some quite hard day individuals who I saw in their pomp playing for Mo. I never thought I would see these guys reduced to tears as many of them were when they came up on the stage. Yeah. Guys like Ali Maxwell bawling his eyes out, Stevie Hamill, James McFadden. All these guys who never showed any emotion like that on the pitch 
when they get this on the adulation, it's brilliant. Yeah, do you know why I loved the Montrose gig, by the way? Um, because I, I said to Tom, is there any chance I could leave early? Because I, I didn't have another spare two and a half hours because Dick was on after me. <laughs> so, so the bold Tom did me right. I know what Tom's like. I mean, when you get any four Hall of Fames, it's a shocker. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to say that. You do your head. So, you so know, Scotland, Partick Thistle. Hibs. Hibs. And Glen Afton. Glen Afton. You've got to get into Glen Afton. Yeah. He won, he won, he won you the know the Dundee United one? I think I'm the... Oh, I would hate the chorus. I think I'm the only player that played in that UEFA Cup run that's not in it. Oh, oh is that right? That's outrageous. So that's, um, you and that panel at all. I don't know what kind of influence you've got, but... By the way, that's our next campaign, oh, by the way. You've yeah, got to be. I was only there for a couple of seasons, but a couple of good seasons. And, How and many goals did you score in each season? Of I think I get 28 the first year. For no, no, genuinely. I scored 20? 28 for Dundee and 18 and 2 for Dundee. I scored oh. two for Dundee on loan before I went back. Right. I knocked him back twice and then ended up uh, signing. I get 28 in total for Dundee and 18, two for uh, did, Dundee. Did you, so 20, a, did you score in a Derby game? Oh, aye. For, oh, both, for both teams. Yeah. I mean, oh. I scored for plenty of goals for Dundee in the yeah. Derby before I signed, obviously. The Wet Rangers then went back and then... I mean, we, we won the Scottish Cup semi final. Uh, we yeah. beat oh, Dundee sure. 3 2. And so I 28 goals in two Carlos. seasons for Dundee United? Oh, no, that was the first season. That was uh, 28 next the next season. season. I, I get some 20 Tom. odds. <laughs> you the next year. Oh, you're a shoe in by we're going to start a campaign absolutely, um, yeah. absolutely. and you'll need speakers when you get the dinner yeah absolutely. <laughs> do, you, do you know any that, well exactly <laughs> not at your prices <laughs> uh, anyway apart from that um, at the weekend if you're going to a game there's lots to look forward to Rangers against Dundee United um, and of course Liam Fox still in charge there no manager in place yeah. yet um, Hibs against Aberdeen which is a belter on the Saturday um um, of course, Aberdeen, uh, I think Jim Goodwin at this moment is saying he's happy that his, his summer signings have uh, clicked so quickly. Um, so they've been able to concentrate on the football. He's happy with what they're producing. Uh, in contrast, I think Hibs are a wee bit shaky, your, your old side, uh, Ruffy. Yeah, well, Tam keeps telling us uh, the signings that come in are for the future, not the now, but I don't think the fans want that. They want success. They want Hibs to be up there, top four at least and challenging but it's not happened so far so they need to go on some kind of run yeah we'll look at it in greater detail tomorrow um, Livingston against Kilmarnock St Johnston against Ross County uh, and of course uh, St Mirren Celtic and Motherwell Hearts on the Sunday St Mirren Celtic is the 12 o'clock kick off on the Sunday thank you to so many people who've just reminded me uh, I was going to get egg in my face I thought Celtic would lose to Shakhtar Donetsk and quite a few people actually have leathered me on this feed for it Ruffy but you predicted 1-1 yes, yeah I had one one, oh, good uh, on you. Yeah. And I should have been wrong. It should have been two one, at yeah. least for Celtic. Two one, Pfft, should have been three or four. Um, but as Fergie, who's a man who could put the ball in the back of the net, mentioned, um, quite uh, when you're in European football, you've got to take your chances, and they missed them. Uh, how it's all going to? pan out over the next uh, month or so you can give us your opinion as well because we've got our reporters out at the Champions <laughs> League games uh, we're going down to Liverpool Tom we're taking them all down hey, tell me last week the BBC uh, are you going down? <laughs> no, no. No, you know, I'm not going down <laughs> same way I was not going to um, the Manchester City we knew and yeah. him and Darren Jackson were meant to be going you know we're going to the Bernabeu as well we're ah, going to that that's all we we go. Go. Ah, we just go. Uh, the answer to the quiz question uh, Ruffy knows, I don't right, know. What was the question again? The question Conference was, League winners. Uh, which uh, Roma. Team? Roma, it oh, was. Well it was, of course, Roma. Jose, Jose Mourinho. Um, always, uh, well, the majority of the clubs that he's uh, managed, he's brought them silverware. Um, that's the answer. Roma, and all I'm going to ask you to do is if you get a chance, uh, tell your friends. We're on Monday to Friday at four o'clock. Hit the subscribe button, and you can also download the PLZ Soccer app in Google Play and in the App Store, and you'll get all the breaking football news. And thank you to so many of you who are doing that as well. Um, we're going to be giving away, uh, coming up, we'll give away a range. Rangers top from last year and uh, the Eintracht Frankfurt Rangers programme, Ruffy. Oh. I thought it would be a nice wee prize for someone who likes a wee bit of memorabilia. Well, I was feeling a wee bit generous yesterday after we were talking about all the programmes we yeah. got for Seville in Manchester. I was going to bring one of my six in yeah. and <laughs> maybe give that away to some lucky. What a great gesture. Yeah. Any chance you can bring the gloves in that you promised us a couple of weeks ago yeah, when you I threw that in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'll bring that. Pro I'll bring that. We and bring it is good, isn't it? It's yeah. a true. Will you bring the gloves yes, in that you said yes, you were going to yes, sign? Yes, I will. We'll, yes, I will. we'll give them away to the yeah, Sundays as no well. Problem. Brilliant. Tom? 
He's a gentleman. Top man. Uh, anyway, apart from anything else... Uh, hey, I don't need to invite you in for the grub deal. <laughs> That's twice he's oh, been on the now. Three and he's in. <laughs> right. Three and he's in as part of the staff, so... October let's... the 9th. October the 9th. <laughs> Um, might, a wee thigh strain or something. <laughs> Absolutely. The staff have got other diaries open in there, I can see that. <laughs> staff have absolutely, there'd be no show without them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, um, post the photograph, and I hope Sophie enjoys the game. Aye, aye, I, I, no, I hope she will. Uh, fantastic. Um, okay, thanks to Tam, thanks to Ruffy, thanks to Ian Ferguson. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. Tam McManus will be alongside me and Ruffy uh, to chat about the weekend's football. Thanks for watching. <laughs>